All right, welcome back, everyone, to Southern Woods and Waters. Or welcome to this Thursday. Not welcome back, but welcome to this Thursday's edition of Southern Woods and Waters. I'm totally confused tonight anyway. But, hey, we have a fantastic show for you. Each and every week, we try to bring you a great, great show. Well, this one has some history to it. And I want to set the stage for you just a little bit. Our guest tonight is one that I filmed three years ago putting in if you'll remember the show we had uh, bobby wilson on here along with uh, david roddy and a few others and we were talking about putting telemetry devices inside the lake sturgeon that we released out there uh, by gapton steam plant in uh, shelby bottoms and so uh, we're going to have a little history lesson of what took place then we, we've talked about that but then we're going to find out where are they today and uh, I think it's going to be a really, really interesting show. Tonight's guest, I have a single guest on here with me tonight. Uh, he is married, by the way, but he, <laughs> I'm talking about I, he is by himself. And his name is Eric Gaines, and he is with Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. He is the commercial uh, fishing and mussel biologist for Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. He said his office is right beside Bobby Wilson's. And that's unfortunate, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, tell you what, well, let's welcome our guest tonight, Eric Gaines. And Eric, thank you so much for being on the show. Pleasure. I uh, I got to pick on Bobby because I just love Bobby to death. I mean, Bobby's <laughs> yeah. Bobby's one of the better guys at TWRA. He's always got a smile on his face, as far as I'm concerned. He does, and and he loves what he does, and so uh, it comes across, and that's a good thing. If you're going to have the head of a fishing, or head of deer, or head of whatever department, they need to like what they do. They do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now you are the head of the commercial fishing and mussel program uh, programs. Yes. Now. What all does that entail, Eric? Just a little bit. Let's tell what what is TWRA doing to do with commercial fishing? Say, um, well, here we have, uh, of course, a, a a pretty decent sized commercial program. Mm -hmm. uh, usually around three hundred commercial fishermen uh, every year, uh, and they fish generally for catfish, of course. Right. Uh, next one would be buffalo. Right. And then we have a row fishery, which is paddlefish. Paddlefish. For the mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. uh, our mussel uh, divers or commercial harvesters that we have, we currently we have a, uh, just a little over 50 harvesters. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's down from what it used to be in the late 90s, uh, but still a, a small number of harvesters out there. So uh, that generally happens on Kentucky Lake, too. So. Well, now we want to do a show uh, sometime in the near future with just about mussels because I'm gonna tell you something I didn't f really realize what all a mussel does but it is the water purification system for yes. our lakes and streams and rivers um, but do we have a lot of them in East Tennessee or is it mainly middle Tennessee and in parts of western Tennessee that have the mussel that that we do TWRA puts in and and maintains well the, they're statewide they are we, statewide they okay. are statewide we have a, a very diverse um, mussel fauna uh, for the state and uh, of course the general harvest is in West Tennessee that's as what far I was as the thinking. commercial that's program on, right. on uh, Kentucky Lake so that's generally where there where that happens at now I've seen uh, divers on J Percy Priest is that are they diving for mussels or are they what are they doing there? I mean, because I usually see this guy once or twice a year in the same spot diving. Uh, I'm not really sure what he could be. Okay, he he, he not, could be noodling. Okay, you know, but it's but not, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with muscles. No, okay, no. okay. All right. Now, the commercial end of it, uh, catfish, tell us. Uh, are you do you get reports from these guys on how much they harvest or we, we do we have a monthly reporting system uh, for the commercial fishers for the state uh, they send those in monthly and uh, we look at the harvest totals that we have generally quarterly and then we have a, a yearly summary uh, for harvest for the state what do we do with Asian carp? Because <laughs> I know somebody's <laughs> gonna call. Somebody's so, gonna call about that one. Yeah, we're 
we're currently we're monitoring where they are in the state, trying to get all the reports that we can um, from sport fishermen as well as you know the commercial guys out there, and we're trying just to get a better understanding of where they're occurring, and then you know try to get with our state biologists and see if they have any any good ideas on how we can try to manage those. And we are getting an influx from Michigan and Wisconsin and all those lakes where they they're pretty dominant up there and and they're helping us out i understand bobby told me that we're kind of conversing back and forth and see what if what's succeeding there if we can apply it here maybe and and get some of it to work for us here oh yeah Bob, bobby's in touch with the aquatic nuisance um, people for each state uh, so he gets together with those individuals and tries to come together with some type of management plan uh, so we can better understand what they're doing in the state Zebra mussels? Are we are we getting hit by them? Per well, tough, occasionally we'll have just a few, but they they really haven't taken over like the big scare that that we were supposed to have. So it, they yeah, because every magazine I read said you know uh, they can ruin a lake in no time whatsoever, and I'm like, you know what? How can we control them? Uh, or how as fishermen can we help? Well. <sighs> There's really not that. Occasionally, we'll, when we go out and do our muscle surveys, we'll have a few that show up, but they've never really es established a, a large um, population in the lakes. Like I say, you'll see an increase one year, and then you'll hardly see them the next year. So um, it's the water. Does dining. anything eat them? Well, our drum do. Drum. Uh, they'll they'll eat our clams and you know our mussels and stuff that mm -hmm. we have in the state. So that's generally what. You know, we'll eat those, but there's there's really not enough of them out there to uh, to have a a large concern. You know, I'd say right now. All right, I want to get in back into the sturgeon just a little bit because, okay. my goodness, that was a fish that's been here since you know way before Moby Dick was ever thought of. I mean, sturgeon <laughs> yeah. is is one of the oldest prehistoric fish that we still have today. That along with gar, I think is is not yeah. quite as old. Not not quite, but kind of close but uh, one of the closest species but but sturgeon is a considered a prehistoric fish that still survives it is along with of course the paddlefish and the paddlefish that's yeah. right paddlefish i forgot about paddlefish and gar uh those three are kind of close but by far the sturgeon is the oldest and we've tried to i understand that twra was trying to reintroduce and reestablish the lake sturgeon in our waters because it is a natural uh, habitat for them. Yes, it is. Uh, they're supposed to be endemic in the state. Uh, we started that program in East Tennessee. Right. right. Uh, in year 2000, in mm -hmm. July, uh, they had a release, and uh, we've been releasing them ever since uh, in Upper East Tennessee. And we started our release program or reintroduction program for the Cumberland in 2006. Right. So. And in 2006. I we released how many well we released how many when, whenever we did that about three years ago we I think it was like well it, we released 30 that had tags 30 in them. that's it that's yeah it. that was yeah. it that was it that was the number but are we releasing more and more each year uh you know we release a lot of walleye and stuff like that uh uh, through the eggs and the fingerling programs and yeah. stuff like that. Are we getting more and more of the sturgeon to be released? Um, well, it, it's, it stays about the same. Of course, we get a lot of help uh, with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Right, right. They go to Wisconsin. They get those for us. Uh, they hatch those out, a majority of them. Uh, although in a couple of past years, we did have a few of those hatched out in Springfield and yeah, Normandy and hatchery. Yeah, David yeah, yeah. I was there when he hatched them. So we, we've 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 had a good successful program hatching those, but it's it's been pretty steady. We, we've not had an increasing number of those. Okay. Pretty difficult, you know, to get those when they when they go up for spawning. Uh, so we we hope to get you know a, a large number of those, but it, it's usually less than what we had hoped for. I want to talk to you about something else with the sturgeon in just a minute, but first we got to take a break and visit some of our fine sponsors. Hurry back to more of Southern Woods and Waters. This segment is being brought to you by Stan Sloan Zora Bait Company, where setting the hook is an everyday thing. This segment is being brought to you by Fate Sanders Marina. Come by and check out the jewel of Percy Priest Lake. 
All right, this week's Pieces of the Week is being brought to you by Flowers Deer Processing. Hey, it's about a month and a half away. Starts the beginning of deer season here in the great state of Tennessee. It's open September 1st in the great state of Kentucky. So get get everybody getting those bows and arrows out and sharpening their, honing their skills, <laughs> getting ready for that day to come. And our pictures here, this is uh, first place. This is the June 28th winners uh, of the... Uh, Mike and Nina bowling tournament, and this was first place was Nolan Petit and Justin Earps with 19.80 pounds. What a fine, fine bag of, of fish there, and those are some nice ones they're holding up right there. Second place was Tony Farrell and Wayne Godfrey. This is this, 12.90 pounds, so there was a like seven pound difference there. Third place was Barry Steele and Robert Brownlee with 12.53 pounds. And the big smallmouth came with Bud and Josh Cagle, a 4.47 pound brownie. That's a that's nice. That's a nice, <laughs> nice brown fish. Hey, you can send your fish too here at Southern Woods and Waters, 474 James Robinson Parkway, Nashville, Tennessee, 37219, or simply email them to me at Hugh at SouthernWoodsandWaters.com. We'll get them on there really fast. Uh, got a lot. That was the June 28th winners. Let me tell you something. Mike and Nina Bowling religiously send me all the pictures and we're going to start showing a, little, a few more pictures get caught up just a little bit because everybody likes to see their picture especially when they win they do <laughs> <laughs> but 19.80 and then second place 12.90 that's a that's almost seven pound difference there yeah uh like in 10 one hundredths of a, a, a of a pound so that's pretty close uh, but uh, i don't tell you when you're on, you're on. Sometimes yeah. you're the, the, the bug and sometimes you're the windshield, but those guys were definitely the windshield. They were. <laughs> they, they had a great time. Eric, what I want to talk to you about is in the videos that we shot uh, three years ago when we were yeah. releasing the sturgeon, when you were putting in the uh, transmittal devices, little transmitters, uh, a lot of people called and emailed and like, did that, they look really fragile. And they were, they were flopping around and everything. They look really fragile, but they're not as quite as fragile as you would think, considering no. uh, they were years and years BC <laughs> that they've 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 come about this long. And uh, the the sturgeon really is a stronger fish than what we give it credit for. It is, and it's a a, a great survivor. It really is. Yes, it is. Even with through all the droughts. Now, you can imagine that fish, that species is probably seen a lot bigger droughts than what we've just gone through. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and by the way, I heard Lake Normandy is 11 feet under summer pool right now. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's huge. It really is. Uh, Mark Travis with uh, Mark Travis Guy Service called me today, and he said, Hugh, that, that lake's really down. And he said there's a... Uh, was it three municipalities that uh, draw water from that lake yeah. and so that's the reason it's down so far so uh if you get a chance to get on your knees let's let's pray for a little bit more rain <laughs> to, to come down that way uh because we really need it we really do and and because you know, 11 feet under summer pool is a lot that's a lot yes uh we're getting down to what lay lake and all that was in atlanta uh, at, well, we're hopefully we're not going to get I that low. Not. I hope <laughs> not. But the sturgeon, they are a survivor. Uh, but now you can't you can catch them, but you can't keep one. That's correct. Uh, can you explain a little bit about the uh, if somebody does catch one, what what's to be done? Well, if they catch one, um, try to handle it as as, as best you can. Uh, uh, take your hook out. Uh, release the fish, of course, as best you can. Uh, if you could get a length on that fish, that would be great if mm -hmm. that's available. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's not, uh, release that fish. You can call our office, 615-781-6575. Uh, uh, talk to Jason Henniger. He's over that's that right. program. Right. And uh, we give out a certificate. A tarp. A tarp certificate. I, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we... we and, and that is really to collect as much data as we can out there. The the sports sport anglers out there are, are some of our best people that you know sometimes that can help us out mm -hmm. with collecting some data. So we get where they catch those. Uh, maybe it's not where we would think someone them would be caught. Right. Uh, but we we try to check those off as maybe we can go back and sample those places later. 
are they a live shad type predator fish? Uh, do they go after shad and crawfish and the the things that a lot of other fish eat? Or are they they're not a plank just a solely plankton eater. Uh, they're not like a, a paddlefish. No, they they all when they're small they'll go after the really small invertebrates that we have on right. the bottom. Um, Freshwater shrimp, stuff like that. Yeah, small clams. Small clams. Yep, crayfish too. When they get a little bit larger, right? Um, now they will eat a few fish, uh, but that's if, if they're on the bottom, if they're close to one of the dams, maybe some have died and they've gone to the bottom. They'll, right. They'll eat those, but not not a real big fish eater. Are they uh, kind of like a catfish? Then they're they're kind of bottom huggers and. They, they 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 tend to stay on the bottom. Stay on the bottom. Yep, they do. Uh, they'll feed. A lot of times when it when it warms up, they'll they'll stay in certain areas, and and they generally won't move out of those areas. They they tend to slow down when it warms up a little bit. So when we track those on a reservoir, you know you can say, oh, I, I think I'm going to be coming up to one of the sturgeon that you know has been there since last year, and sure right. enough. It's usually in about they, the same they'll area. They'll stay there that long. They they can. They'll they'll move up and downstream, but usually, you know, if you find one, if it's been in or in the reservoir, at least from what I've been doing, uh, tracking those, then they'll be in that small area. Are they a homebody? I, and, and I say that in all <laughs> yeah. sincerity. Are, are they just, uh, you know, this is my domain. This is my territory. I know what that stump is. I know that treetop. I know I'm in this hole. I know every rock behind me. This is my home. This is my living room. Well, I don't think we understand a, a lot of, of um, where they're going to be using the spaces at in the reservoir yet. Mm -hmm. um, my work is just to see if they'll pass through the dams on the Cumberland River so we can tell what our stocking rate should be mm -hmm. you know, or maybe where we should stock. We may be able to stock a certain area and, and they pass through a dam and, and spread out very very well in the system so we can limit where we're stocking of course that saves on you know time effort oh, yeah. so now i want to ask you the 30 that you and i filmed and released three years ago can you give us a little hint where they are today well of course we released those at shelby bottoms right and a lot of those went up stream to old hickory dam and we had lots that went through the dam and then, of course, they went up to Old Hickory Dam, and then they went downstream and went through Cheatham Dam. Uh, so we, we pretty much had an even upstream and downstream they movement. They went a long way to go to Cheatham Dam. They did. They did. That reservoir is about 67 miles long from Old Hickory to Cheatham. Um, and we have a lower receiver unit actually in Barkley below Cheatham Dam. Really? Yep. So we, we watch those fish or listen for those fish. They moved through Cheatham Dam, and they moved down into Lake Barkley. That's an even longer way. It is. Uh, it is. Now, what do you think draws them to that? I mean, what draws them? When you release them way up here and they go way down here to the other end, do you think it's a, a fear factor that they want to get away from whatever it was that traumatic <laughs> thing? <laughs> yeah. Somebody trying to stick something through their skin? Or, or do you think it was just... Uh, I don't know, instinct to, for them to go that far? I, I think it is a little bit of instinct. You, you release that fish, and, of course, it looks for the best habitat that it can find. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, during that time of the year, usually in January, we have higher flows. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, that could, could act in a way to carry them either up or downstream or, you know, aid in that type of movement. Uh, but they just they look for the best habitat they can. Um, and of course, if they can pass through one of our one of our locking dams, then they will. That's pretty amazing. It is. That's pretty amazing because uh, I got to ask you then: of the thirty that we put transmitters in and released, did all of them make it, or did we lose any? Uh, we we didn't we we didn't lose any. We of course we that's we, astounding. Well, we we have a very good program in how we we tag those fish. We got to give kudos now to Tennessee Tech was there too. We do. Dr. Phil Batola was there you, assisting he was, us. He was awesome. Man. He he really helped us out. Because uh, I remember we took a picture of the transmitters and they were just little bitty things that you could hold in the palm of your hand, and they were just really really small. But still, you know I don't care if you. You put that under your skin, it's going to cause some problems, and it could have caused problems. 
But I think uh, Tennessee Tech doctor, the doctor helped us on that. Doctor Phil, he he really did. Um, he he helps us out a lot with tagging and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. um, like I say, he he's been in been in that end of the research for a very long time, and we rely on him for that type of advice and aid. Now, what do you what, all this information that Jason's gathering? Uh, of being of people saying to catch them, and, and I know that they're, they're getting locations is mainly what he's trying to find is where they were at this date, as opposed to where we released them or where they may even have been last year at this time. He's trying to figure out habit forming uh, methods that they're using. How's this information going to help us? I mean, are we ever one day going to have? A krill limit for sturgeon? Do you believe is it going to be to mine your lifetime? You think? Hopefully. 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 Um, of course, right now the best thing that we can do is report any catch that we do have. Uh, but one day, um, hopefully, you know, it, it's going to be a while though. Yeah, it's going to be. I mean, a while. it could be 20 years from now before we have a a large enough populations where you know a lot of people catch those, uh, but. Right now, we're really not sure when that's. I hope our grandchildren thank us one day for doing this. I'm you sure know? they will. Hey, we got to do our product of the week, so let's go do our product of the week. <laughs> this week's product of the week is being brought to you by Gateway Tire and Service Center. We sell tires for the way you drive. All right, I tell you what, I, I got a hold of Daryl Cook, and Daryl Cook owns Cook's Tackle Systems. And Daryl says, Hugh, I'd just love for you to show this on your show, and he is right. He sent us some of these. We're going to be giving some of these away later uh, in the month. But these are tackle organizer systems that are really, really easy to put in your boat. And the great thing about it is, as you can see, it's got this one has two in it. It has the clips for your bagged items, such as your worms or your crawfish or your jig trotters or whatever. But it also has slots that allow you, once it's bolted into your rod box, you can hang spinner baits or crank baits, uh, buzz baits, yep. but they will stay organized and stay out of your way, and they're easy to find that way. And I don't have to sit there and go through four or five hooks and one up my fingernail and all that to try and change my baits. It's this easy. Cook's Tackle Systems, you can check them out on our website. We're going to have them on there very shortly, but I think you're going to hear a lot more coming from Cook's Tackle System. Hey, we got to take a break. When we come back, we're talking more sturgeon than you shake a stick at. So hurry back with more of Southern Woods and Water. This segment is being brought to you by Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Join us in preserving and protecting Tennessee's wildlife. All right, welcome back. And you can call us here at 737-7767. You got any questions you might ask? or might want answered. Uh, Eric Gaines is with us tonight with TWRA. He is the over the uh, muscle and the uh, uh, commercial fishing end of what we do on the fisheries, on our state fisheries. And you're in the administrative office. Yes. So you're over regions one, two, three, and four, as far as that's concerned. Well, we, we partner with those. Right, yeah, right. With those. Um, but they kind of give you the information and you kind of can put numbers to it and yes and come up with solutions or equations that we need to work on and, and we we try that's what you <laughs> that's what you have to do yeah. <laughs> so so you got guys out there in the field that are doing it and, and let's talk because uh we got some callers coming in but they, we use gill nets we use shocking information you get that also uh, and and those those things help they they really do um, the our regional fisheries biologists they go and they they work really hard they have their seasonal uh, efforts when they go out and, and look for certain fish so whatever fish there are sampling they can do that you know they pass it up um, and then we, we look at that and see how we can apply that uh, well I gotta state. give a big shout out to Todd St. John that's my Todd, buddy yeah. Todd's out there <laughs> hustling all the time and he does a wonderful job he does and David Roddy I've been with him many times uh, and just think the world of David. And he's, David's a uh, super guy. Oh, let me tell you, he, he does have a big S on his chest, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's a great guy. All right, we got our guests here, and we have Johnny. Johnny, how can we help you tonight? Uh, 
Johnny? Yeah. Can you hear us now? Yes, sir. How can we help you tonight, Johnny? Oh, I didn't realize it's been three years ago since I talked to y'all. Yeah. Mother's <laughs> <laughs> milk. Yes, sir. But uh, I called you, I guess, three years ago. I was talking about staging, uh, sturgeon. Yeah. And uh, like I said, they they got to be baby. I told you then, I got a picture and I never just seen it. My daddy was in the 1950s on, here in the Cumberland River, right around the Old Hickory Bridge. Him and his brother, I got a picture of them, but they were the height of about five foot two and wow. hanging him up with a paddle. Goodness. Wow. And they caught him, where they caught him was in a 12 inch front line tangle net, they call it back then. Well, I'll be. Yeah. Well, let's go. Uh, you know, you had not, no baby hood, just 12 inch tangle hood, they call it. Well, Johnny, I bet you a, a dollar to a donut that. Eric would love to see the picture of that. I really big would. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might even make one of the covers of the fishery magazines. You know. That, yeah. Could <laughs> if, if you got something like that, Johnny. Uh huh. And Johnny's at Bumpus Mills. Yeah. And so uh, I ain't been catfishing there lately, but uh, that means you vote, and I'm ready to head down there. <laughs> well, Johnny, I tell you what, I wish you would uh, uh, leave your number with Andrew, uh -huh. and let Eric call you uh, sometime soon and see if he could get a copy of that picture or something. Try and, to do it. Man, that, when, when you're holding something like that, a photo like that, it's it's worth sharing. Uh, it I is. I've got a bunch of big old pictures catfish. <laughs> All right. Well, thank <laughs> you so much, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. All right. We appreciate you, Don, Johnny. All right. Thank, thank you. you. And Roy, Roy, how can we help you tonight? Yes, uh, I got a question about walleye. Uh, oh, okay. On Center, Center Hill Lake, we see them fishing up here at the headwaters at Rock Island, jigging in the spring and taking a lot of those big females out. Um, I don't know if they're really spawning or not. And then, the, of course, the TWRA are shocking them, taking them out and taking the eggs out and doing the fingerling thing. But, you know, after that, we're down here burning tanks and tanks of gas. And we're not catching walleye. I mean, they're a new breed, I understand, from what I've caught, some of the old and some of the lighter colored ones, and, and, we're, and nobody's catching them this year. They're just not catching them. Well, I, I tell you uh, now, in, on Center Hill's behalf, uh, the walleye have kind of spread out. Yeah. And we're catching them. Now, we've been catching them. A lot of bass fishermen trying to catch smallmouth or largemouth have been able to catch walleye and i'm not talking about little walleye either uh chris snow a good buddy of mine uh, uh creator of snow spinner he went took joy and i to center hill and he caught one that was real close to seven pounds that's a good sign that's a We're good size yeah. walleye i've caught a four or five or something yeah catching some it's 12 and 13 inches long i've caught a uh, five or six four pounds but i'm up here around page four boat dock on the white county side Right, right. We're fishing from there down to, you might say, uh, Sligo, and this not, I mean, and you see no boats down there trolling. You see nobody, you know, and you, the fish finder, there's no, you don't see any fish. Well, I tell you, I tell you what, Johnny, we got to move on, but I tell you what, try Lake Normandy if you really want to go after some walleye, because yeah. I understand Lake Normandy is a sleeper lake for walleye. They've got a great population. They've got a great population of walleye. So for all you walleye fishermen out there, uh, you better put Lake Normandy on your Christmas <laughs> list this <Yeah>. year <laughs> because it really has got a lot. And we thank you very much, for that, Johnny. And Philip, Philip, how can we help you tonight? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, to your guest, are you familiar with Mark Hughley out of Hendersonville by any chance? Can I get a yes or no on that? I have heard the name, yes. Okay. I'm going to tell you what. Mark Hughley is, to me, the epitome of Tennessee. And if if the host there is not familiar with Mark Hughley out of Hendersonville, I would love for you to get this guy on this show. He has been a commercial fisherman. I know exactly who you're talking about. Oh, my goodness. You Mark. talk about somebody that would just fascinate people. Mark Hughley is an amazing, amazing man. Um, He's a great commercial fisherman. I have enjoyed fisherman. spending time with him. He has taught me so.
so much. He is so informative. It's just a phenomenal commercial catfishing. It, it's, oh my goodness, Mark Hughley. And he's really good friends. I, I don't think this will rub you wrong with, with Dan Permanent, which is oh, yeah. the producer yeah. of Fish and Affliction, which yeah. is now on the station. Right. I, I would love to see you get them two guys on there one evening on a Thursday evening. I, I'm telling you what, that would be amazing. Well, i tell um, you what, we'll see what we can do with that because I know Mark Hughley. Oh, my goodness. Get him on that show. Yeah, we'll, that try, we'll try our be best. Absolutely great. Well, we'll I'm try. Pick up phone call. And- All right. Well, we appreciate oh, it. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we got Johnny. Johnny, how can we help you tonight? Hey, you. Yes, sir. How you doing, man? Uh, uh, just loving life. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Hey, what's the rough fish knivers at? Uh, now, wait a I minute. Um, what did I hear? Um, what are you Now, I heard they're active on Old Hickory uh, a little bit. Now, nothing's really wearing it out right now. I think... Uh, I think the heat, well, the temperatures got everything just a little bit on the on the dampened side. But uh, now I have heard good reports on striper and hybrid on Old Hickory right now. Uh, and they are in the jumps. Yep, they're in the jumps and mainly upper between 231 and up that way, uh, up towards uh, Goose Creek and stuff yep. like that. Okay. Is where they are. I saw them last week on them boys out in Big Hive and Rockfish. They was catching them all week or day, wasn't they? Yes, they were. They they did an awesome job. And that was when, you know, the, the generation schedule was on a little bit. And, you know, they're not generating quite as much right now. So if you do catch a day when they've got three generators going, now that's where you need to be. Uh, I'll be honest with you, because they stir up enough water and oxygen in the water, and they get the bait fish moving about. You're going to generate a feeding frenzy when you do that. Well, well you look for bait. Yep, you got to look for the bait. Yeah, they're using them. They're using uh, skipjack. The big skipjack. Yep, yep. They're using skipjack and big shad. All right, but I appreciate it, sir. Thank you, Johnny. All right. Yeah, we don't have one, uh, another one there, Andrew. But I tell you what, great, great calls. We appreciate those calls. We we hope we answered them correctly for you. We hope we uh, did a good job for you. But I tell you what, we're uh, uh, there's not a lot of good reports fishing because it has been so blooming hot. Uh, water temps is 88, 89, 90 degrees. Now it's been cooling off. Uh, Eric, later in the evening, you know, about 10, 30, 11 o'clock, it's down to like 74, 72, 74. A little, little cooler in the evening. A little cooler in the evenings. But, man, it can get really hot during the day. Yeah, I was out today yes, tracking Lake Sturgeon. Um, we actually had several fishermen around or below Old Hickory Dam, below the spillway, mm-hmm. and they were catching quite a few striped bass. Now, were they generating uh, quite a bit, or was it? No, no generation. They were just spilling. Okay. And off okay. the gates, and we, like I said, we had several people down there, and they were catching quite a few fish. Good deal, then. Yeah. If if they're not hadn't been running the generators as much, so any, but just about any movement of water down there is yeah. good water. Yeah, it is. Uh, so th- so that helps. But I have never in my life seen as mi- much bait fish that's on Old Hickory right now, and Percy Priest. My goodness. Quite a few, what, yeah. What a great fishery to have that much bait. Our fish ought to just be sitting there just getting fat and sassy, <laughs> uh, just gorging themselves. Uh, uh, one good thing is is uh, we were fishing Old Hickory the other night, uh, Joy and I, and Joy caught a 35-pound flathead. I meant right off the bat. That's a good now, size. Now, this was a lot lighter-looking flathead, too. His underneath and most of his tail was white, Eric. Wow. So he'd really come from a lot of deeper water, I would suspect, and been in that deep water for a long time, and finally just came out on that flat just to see what was available to eat, is what I believe happened, because that's where she caught it was on a flat. But, uh, and we weren't far from the river channel, so that's kind of what I figured happened. Uh, But when I first saw the tail and saw the white, I thought it was one of those Arkansas white catfish. (laughs) <laughs> and I thought, well, now how did he get here? <laughs> but, 
But when she finally did get him brought up after 15 minutes of fighting him, <laughs> uh, it was a big old flathead, and it was just just super nice fish. And so, just a, a great, great job the TWRA has done in managing our fish. I tell you what, you just never know when you put that hook in the water. You just never know what you're going to come out with. You hope it's a bass if you're bass fishing, <laughs> yeah, or you hope it's a walleye if you're walleye fishing. But you never truly know till it, till it's in the boat or in the net. So. Uh, <laughs> But we appreciate that very much. Hey, we got to do our tip of the week, so let's go do it right now. This week's tip of the week is being brought to you by Interstate Batteries of Music City, located at 3729 Highway 109 North in Lebanon, Tennessee, home of your alternative power source. All right. Now, what I was going to show you is I've got some little tips here for you. Sometimes the fish get a little used to the crankbaits that we've been throwing. And I have found a different way. Now I learned this from the Bassmaster Classic that they had in Birmingham uh, two or three years ago, Joe and I went down there. But this is just a, a shad wrap, number seven shad wrap. And normally there is just a hook on the back back here. But if you'll see here, I added a one that has a little flash to it and the feathers. And I tell you what, I found out that that extra little flash every now and then will entice that hit. The, mm. it, it's just a reactionary hit, but it makes it more, look more lifelike, like there's a little bit bigger uh, food source there than <laughs> yeah. normal. And I tell you what, I've got that in the in the shad. But look, I've, uh, B and B Custom Lures custom painted this uh, shad wrap number five for me in the red crawfish, and if you'll see. I added red to it back here and I went down to my friendly Bass Pro Shops and after I picked up a bait from them, uh, a Rapala here that I custom, had custom painted by B&B, I added a chartreuse to it. Uh, so I made this one and it's not quite as fancy as these others, but I think it's going to work just fine. But we, I've been using the Mustad, the Ultra Points in the, uh, with the flash and, and, and uh, has the feather trebles. And these are just awesome, awesome things that you can do. Hey, while you're sitting there at night, you sit there and do do you three or four of them tonight, matter of fact, and get ready for tomorrow's fishing. Hey, we got to take a break. So when we come back, we got more of Southern Woods and Waters. Plus, boy, has Joy done it again? She's got a cookie that will melt in your mouth. So hurry back to more of Southern Woods and Waters. This segment is being brought to you by Advanced Chiropractic where we help America feel great, one spine at a time. This week's recipe of the week is being brought to you by Broker Headquarters Group. Let our team in camo help you with all of your real estate needs. All right, Joy has done it again. Like I told you, she took a little Girl Scout cookie mix, added a little something to it. You didn't do a Girl Scout cookie thing? I thought that's what they come from. Okay, I'm sorry, I've got it all wrong, but Joy's gonna straighten me out, so hurry up, Joy, straighten me out over there. That's a lifetime of straightening you out. <laughs> <laughs> Even on Snickerdoodle Rolos. Oh, I thought it's so Girl good. Scouts sold Snickerdoodles. Oh, they might. Everybody sells Snickerdoodles, but not like this. Oh, okay. This is off of Pinterest, thanks to Lynn here at Channel 5 getting me on that. This is, that you have it on here? On the things, okay. The snickerdoodle cookie Rolos. You just take snickerdoodle cookie dough or any kind you want to really. Just pat it out and then get your Rolo candy and then make it into a ball. Put them about four inches apart because they spread out. They just fall straight down on a cookie sheet. So give them plenty of room. 350 for 15 minutes and they're awesome. 350 degrees for 15 minutes. Smell good, don't they? Oh, they're they're killer. I'm, I'm at, sorry, you can't have them. I'm telling you. What about Faye Hickerson? Where is Faye Hickerson? I don't know. Is Faye Hickerson still working? <laughs> she is. Raise your two. And we had a great time today with uh, the Toms and the the um, Randys and all the guys at Shelbyville on that new um, oh, yeah, August that the 4th and 5th gun fishing and hunting show that's going to be a lot of fun we're going to be there in pine creek archery we're going to set up an club's going to be there and well, hopefully twre is going to be there and natasha uh, she's going to come sell her fudge mm. those 
Uh, Maybe we'll be, be off our diet by then. Might be a five finger discount plan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you, Hugh. But thank you, Joy. And you get that that recipe along with many, many others on our website, southernwoodsandwaters.com. And by the way, while we're talking about southernwoodsandwaters.com, do not forget, because a bunch of you evidently have, but a bunch of you have been going on there and applying for our giveaway. And we are going to give away a pair of amphibia sunglasses here in the month of August. And uh, But you have to go to our website and enter for the drawing and these are really nice amphibia sunglasses you can check them out through our website we've got a link to them and they are totally totally floating sunglasses wow they have hydrocells on the side uh they have are polarized and they even have an extra film that even helps you see further into the water than just polarized but amphibia sunglasses tell them try them out it's amphibia sports uh is uh the website but go check them out they got all kinds we'll be giving away a pair of exodus sunglasses in the month of august but you have to go to our website and register uh the kids contest thank you joy kids contest is going on on our website they've got to draw the little deal send it in to us and we're going to have a panel of judges decide who is the best for the month of August, so we look forward to that. Uh, Famous Days also is on there, and they have some discount coupons that you can pick up right now before you head out to Famous Days. Uh, I want to get back to uh, the sturgeon just a little bit. Uh, we releasing every year now, and so we've been releasing. Are we still trading with Wisconsin and uh, Michigan and some of those states up there for the? Well, we, fingerlings. Yeah, we, we we have that program or established that partnership with Wisconsin. Uh, we we try to get as as many of course as we can uh, to not only us but the Tennessee Aquarium right. helps us out a lot. Uh, so we we we've, we've got a good program right now. We would like to stock more, but you know we we are stocking some, and we like I say we we've been doing it for a while, and you know for years to come. I think it's it's going to be well worth our time. Now, I'm going to tell you, even with the ones that we've started, now, other than the one that Johnny called about, um, five foot, two inch long uh, sturgeon, that, that's a big sturgeon. It is, yes. Um, I have a tarp for a 40 inch sturgeon, and that was four years ago. Yeah, four years ago. So there is a variety of sizes in the water already that's yes. been established, but the ones that we've been putting the telemetry on uh, have only has only been since 2006. Well, when we've been doing that. Well, 2010 we started looking at telemetry work. We released those in 2011. Oh, that's right. And then again in 2012 mm -hmm. to see how that move, see how they're moving in okay. the system. All right. Well. Andrew's telling me I got to give something away right now. I'll tell you what, what we have for you, and I'm sorry, Eric, we got to do this, but hey, we've got some My Blend Deer Minerals. We have two buckets, so I want you to put this on two different places to draw those deer and help those deer during their growth cycle, which is very important right now. Be the fifth caller, 737-7767. Be the fifth caller. You will be our proud winner, and this can help your deer herd right now. So hurry back to more of Southern Woods and Water. This calendar of the week is being brought to you by Drycon Carpet Cleaning. Give us a call or visit us online at drycon.com. All right, we want to give a big shout out and a congratulations to Miss Angie Davis from, is it Lewisburg or Lawrenceburg? Lewisburg. All right, from Lewisburg. So congratulations, Angie. Uh, when your husband or boyfriend wants to kill that big deer, he can thank you for putting out the right minerals to bring them out there for him. Hey, we appreciate that very much, Angie. And by the way, starting this Saturday morning, this Saturday morning, you need to come out there to Flippers for the uh, uh, Realtor Tournament they're having out there. Uh, Fred Van Hook and all his crew will be out there. Uh, glad to take up uh, 4.30 in the morning, I believe. Joy, is that right? They're going to start their uh, registration. 
but the actual tournament I think is like from 5:30 to 1. Uh, they do have a a thousand dollars is guaranteed for the first place money. So uh, they're going to give away some money for big fish, five hundred dollars, three hundred dollars for the biggest one, two hundred dollars for second place big fish. So it ought to be a great time. It is a it is a tournament that's not going to last very long. So get on out there before the sun really gets hot. Have yourself a good time. Do not want you to forget August 4th and 5th. We will be present at the Cal Sonic Arena in beautiful Shelbyville, Tennessee. And they're having their first annual hunting and fishing expo. And they, man, Joe and I just came from down there. What a gorgeous facility that they have down there at the Cal Sonic Arena. And those people have done a masterful job of getting it ready for you to come and see. They're gonna have everything from tractors and ATVs to boats and fishing gear, bows and hunting guns and, and all kinds of camouflage and they are willing to make deals. So come on down there, tree stands and stuff like that. Come on down there, be ready to deal with those fine folks and they're gonna make you walk away a happy man or happy woman whenever you go and visit them. That's the Cal Sonic Arena, August 4th and 5th. Come by and see Southern Woods and Waters. We'll be there all weekend. Also, do not want to forget the Land and Wildlife Show going on yep. the following weekend. TWRA is one of the proud sponsors, along with Bass Pro Shops is one of the proud sponsors of the Land and Wildlife Show. That'll be at Gaylord Opperland uh, facilities out there at the hotel but it lasts for the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yep. Friday, Saturday, Sunday of the following weekend. So come on out there. They do have the big buck scoring contest going on out there. So bring your, uh, your taxidermied head out there and let them score. And then you might be the winner of this year's big Tennessee buck award. So yep. great, great venue going on there. So we got two, three weeks now of great shows and things gearing you up, of course, to get you ready to go out there and go hunting and be well out and bring your animal to flowers deer processing don't forget flowers deer process so that's what we have for the counter i want to take this time to thank my good friend mr eric Gaines with twra he does a great great job out there and he come came highly recommended so i want to thank you eric first of all for being on the show thank you you do an outstanding job along with all kinds of men and women there at tennessee wildlife resources and we thank y'all you do a thankless job a lot thank of times you. uh and i tell you what make sure ladies and gentlemen while you're out there on the water i want to give a big shout out to scott trowbridge bass fisherman rule scott trowbridge saved a little girl's life the other day while in a tournament he dove in after her. She fell off the back of a pontoon boat. You don't see those kind of stories on the news, but you need to. Great, great story. It wound up being really well. Well, it's personal flotation advice. We'll see you next week right here on more Southern Woods Waters.